Hey guys, what is up? We're gonna start this video off with some full disclosure. We are threading the needle between two migraines right now, and so there will be stutters. I'll probably leave some of them, but I'm sorry if there are like a ton of cuts in this video. It's just aphasia can get really bad, and I don't want you guys to need to deal with too much. I'm already needing chopstick. But we are not here to talk about migraines today. We are here to talk about syncope, fainting, vasovagal syncope, neurocardiogenic syncope, passing out. It's something that I do a lot, so I wanted to share some tips with you guys on what I do when I know that I'm about to faint. Obviously, I want to sit here and give you guys the full list of the things that I try to accomplish in between when my service dog alerts me that a faint is coming and when the faint actually hits me but I also thought it might be nice to show you in real life what I'm able to accomplish. <sighs> this is really hard. Um, so we'll see where the day takes us because if I do have a faint, then I will record it for you guys as best as I can and hopefully you'll be able to see me actually put some of this stuff into action. If you are watching this clip, then that means I didn't delete it, which means that I fainted later today. And if I fainted later, then you get to watch it. So the end of this video will be me fainting on camera again. I'm gonna start with the purpose of taking these precautions because even though it seems like it's really obvious, you might not have thought of all of these things. First one, the most obvious probably is safety. Make sure you're in a safe place, make sure your head isn't gonna hit the floor, make sure you're out of everybody's way, just safety. Second thing, to limit the amount of time that you are out. Lack of blood flow to your brain is not good for your brain, so you want to avoid the amount of time that you're completely blacked out, and if you are pregnant like me, you obviously don't want to be taking blood away from the baby for whatever reason, so it is very important that you maintain consciousness. And the third thing, if you've never fainted before or if you don't faint regularly, basically there are after effects to a faint. You feel pretty crummy afterwards, sort of like you have a flu or a migraine hangover. But if you are able to lessen the severity of your faint, then the after effects are also less severe and the after effects are shorter. The amount of time, energy, wherewithal, and help that I have between the alert and the faint dictates how many of these tasks I'm able to get done. So I will let you guys speculate on the order of importance, but just know every faint is a little bit different. Obviously there are some products that I use, so if I mention any of those, I will link them down below so that you guys can see exactly which ones I have. And if you're a faint or two, or even if you just get pre-syncope, maybe they'll help you out as well. Getting into the list, chug some water. Very first thing that I do as much as I can is chug a glass, maybe even two glasses depending on the size. I love using the pineapple because the straw makes it really easy to drink really quickly and I also don't have to tilt my head back which helps with my vertigo which is more of a migraine thing but when you're dizzy you probably don't want to do that also. The more I think about it the more I really do feel like this should be the Jen Rambles channel and my pumpkin cup can be our mascot. Our humble loyal mascot. Not Migraine Jen editing this later. I'm so sorry for that. Jen Rambles channel. Before I do the obvious thing, which is lay down, I also grab my cell phone. Assuming my husband isn't around, I grab my phone so that I can get him on the line, let him know that I'm fainting. 100% of the time, the minimum that I will do is text him and let him know that I'm having a faint and that I don't think it's very severe. Or once it gets really bad, I actually call him and put him on speakerphone so that he can continue working from his office and I can just let him know immediately when I need his help and also, also, he can check on me by saying, hey, are you feeling okay? And I can just kind of grunt and let him know I'm awake. That sounds so bad when I say it that way, but this is our normal. You gotta remember that this is normal. This happens almost every day. It's not weird for us. And it might sound a little bit crazy, but as much as I can, I do try to handle my faints and my migraines on my own. We both feel like my independence is extremely important, so as much as I can, it's me, it's Buddy, we handle our own symptoms, and my safety's taken care of, but I get used to dealing with this on my own, and then I don't have anxiety about, about being by myself. Wow, I'm stuttery. <laughs> Migraines. All right, so I chugged my water, I grabbed my phone, I tried to get to a safe place. 
not just a safe place, but also a safe position. Make sure that I'm laying down so that I don't hit my head, or if I'm sitting, I'm at least kind of propped in a way that my head isn't gonna fall over. I also put my feet up when I'm laying down. Anything works, as long as your feet are up. If I'm not home or if it's not too hot in the house, I'll have Buddy cover me. Cover is the command for DPT, deep pressure therapy. It's one of his POTS tasks. I've gone over this a million times in my videos before and if you've been around for a little bit, then you have seen him do this. If I feel like I'm actually going to go out and I didn't have a chance to get my husband near me for it, I make sure that my head is tilted to the side so that if I have saliva buildup or my tongue, um, I guess your tongue goes limp and it can fall into your throat, so you kind of just want to be on your side and uh, so that you don't choke on anything while you're out. That's what I was told anyway. Now, if I can't sit or lie down, then I either squat or I get moving. The squat, again, is compression on the legs, and it's also just less work for the heart, less gravity to fight against, or I just get moving because exercise as mild as walking can raise your blood pressure. So maybe in the grocery store, I will stop looking at whatever I'm looking at and go ahead and try to take a lap. I'll raise up and down on my toes, do some squats if I'm in a position where it's not awkward to do squats. Anything that sort of just gets that heart pump in a little bit is going to help with feeling less lightheaded. Unless you're already at the point of no return, in which case, sit down. All of this stuff, the laying down, the feet up, and the pressure on my legs helps get the blood back to my heart, helps get the blood back to my head. For many of my faints. Buddy gives me just an absurd amount of warning. He actually comes over and stares at me for a while before the faint comes, which gives me a vague idea that a faint is about to come. And actually I showed that to you last week and or the week before. But he doesn't really like being upstairs, so I have a feeling if he's here, I'm probably gonna faint soon. And he's just kind of waiting for the right time to alert me. So let's see what happens. Aha ha ha ha, told you. So even if the alert itself doesn't come with several minutes of warning, usually Buddy's behavior ahead of the alert clues me in that something is going on. So let's get into the bonus things, things that I prefer I do, and if Buddy gives me many minutes of warning, then I'm able to do them, and they just bring some peace of mind. My blood pressure cuff is actually usually quite far away from me when I faint, but if I am able to get to it, I prefer to have it on for leading up to and after it so that I can track my vitals while everything is going on. It's really important for me to know to track any changes, and it's also important so that I can let my doctor know exactly how low my blood pressure is going and how high my pulse is getting when I'm at certain stages of the episode. It also helped me realize that certain behaviors in Buddy are corresponding to certain symptoms in my body. So Buddy will come start watching me around when I'm at 110 or 115 um, blood pressure uh, systolic. But once I drop below 100, he'll start alerting me. And once I drop below 90, 95, he'll start doing a deeper nudge and that usually means that I'm about to go over the edge and actually faint. I only know these numbers because of having the cuff on, pushing the button over and over, and then later on I can go through the memory on the cuff and see exactly what happened and actually take notes on it. It keeps track of the date, the time, and I think it can keep like a hundred different memory things or something. I don't know. I'd have to check the listing, but it, it holds more memory than I could possibly ever need. Salty snacks. Salt in general. Ask any POTS patients. That is the very first thing that you do for POTS is just salt. So I like to have salty snacks. This is my favorite. It's, um, it's an organic barbecue chip and I like it because it's a zero sugar barbecue chip and I can just eat a million of these. I also like Honey Dijon kettle chips. If I'm feeling well enough and I have a glass of water with me, I'll sit and I'll just keep eating chips. And sometimes the combination of all the chips with all the water will just make the faint not happen. If I'm running out of time and it's available to me, sometimes I'll just take the salt shaker and just lick it off my hand. It's super gross, but it's not that bad once you get used to it because, you know, like everything in chronic illness land, it's really awful at the beginning and your body just adjusts. Am I talking super fast? I feel like I'm talking super fast. I'm sorry. One last thing, just because it's sort of a miserable hot feeling sometimes, if I do feel a little bit warm, I take off my sweater 
because that tiny bit of cold shock can help wake me up a little bit and also because usually I wake up even hotter feeling than I was before the faint and when I'm waking up from a faint I might not feel up for taking my sweater off because it's quite a big maneuver and I would have to sit right back up so taking the sweater off before it gets really bad is ideal if the conditions allow for it i.e. it's not freezing. This last one is a long shot, but if I have the energy, again, it's quite rare, I'll squeeze my calf muscles or my thighs, and that, again, just helps get the blood to me, my torso area. When my husband's around, he does this for me, and it wakes me up so quickly. So when he's around, it does make a huge difference. And again, buddy, buddy can do DPT, but there's something about the squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax that helps a little bit more than having the constant pressure of DPT from the dog. That was a long sentence. So if my husband is around, he does that, and if I feel like I can muster it, I do it to myself as well. Once the faint ends and I'm starting to wake back up, the first thing I do is push that button on the blood pressure cuff to get a reading of where I was exactly when I woke up. That way later on I can actually check whether my blood pressure is increasing and I'm not just assuming where my starting point was. I also pretty immediately look right back over at my service dog to see how he's behaving. If he's still watching me, it might mean that I'm on the edge. Or if he's still paying really close attention to me or still licking me, then I might pass back out. But if he has moved on with his day, if he went to go get a toy and play, then that means my episode is over. Not only celebrating his victory, but also trying to get me back into the swing of things too. And I can't remember if I already said this, but of course I get up very, very slowly. I do it stepwise, I make sure that I'm not dizzy in between, and if I am dizzy in between, I lay back down. Especially now that I'm pregnant, I wanna be as careful as I can for the baby, so I try to avoid any lightheadedness at all. If I have compression socks nearby, which isn't too often, then I'll put on compression socks when it's time to get up, or right when I feel like I'm able to stand, I'll go straight to the compression socks just to try to make sure that my pressure doesn't drop immediately again. So the compression socks that I use are up to the knee and they just compress on the calf. So there's plenty of room in the foot, which I really, really prefer. These are the ones that I have that are a little bit tighter, but if I want ones that are a little bit looser or a little bit less compression, I have another brand as well. So I will link both of those. And that's it for my list, guys. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. Subscribe to the notifications, too, so that you don't miss my random sporadic uploads that come every Friday. Hopefully, I will get more regular, but until then, you're going to need to be subscribed to the notifications to know when things go live. I am going to charge my camera, go set it up in the faint area. I do have this migraine coming on, so I think... I think I should faint later on and I will be able to show you this and hopefully get some of these preventative measures in so that maybe I won't faint all the way. We'll see. And yes, this is all very different. I know it's weird. I started planning out the picture with the plan that I mentioned last week and then I decided forget it. So me and my pregnant self pushed the shelf over, pushed it that way first, then pushed it this way. It was a crazy thing. I like taped everything out, but I'm going to choose a cabinet and get that migraine picture up and I'm so excited for you guys to see it but yeah you're not crazy this all did change okay battery's dead bye guys see you on the floor Buddy is doing his pre-faint thing that he does right before he alerts he's just sitting here staring at me hi bubs Oh, good check, buddy. Good boy. Thank you. Good boy. All right, so we have our alert, and right here in front of me is my little faint station where I set up my um, tripod earlier, so I'm going to get going with the stuff I told you about. Holy cow. can't believe it's actually happening. So, thing number one. Water. Right, buddy? Good boy, he'll hang out. Let me get some water. Go, 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 go. Buddy just walked in. Do you see him down there? Good boy. Good focus. Good focus on mom. Good boy. I guess some water. I'm gonna chug this. It's been about one minute since the alert. Mmm. Ready to do this, bud? Please sit down so I can cover you. 
Okay. I'm going to go have a seat and turn on the real camera real quick. He's hanging out with the weighted blanket. You know what's next, buddy? You want me on that blanket? Good boy. Okay, I'll be right back. Hello, pups. Uh, unfortunately, my camera battery was still charging from earlier, so I've got to do more than I anticipated needing. Good boy. Good focus. Good focus. All right, at this point, it's been two minutes, maybe three. Did I the official camera switch? Record. Mm -hmm. Um, I think at, at this point it's been probably about three minutes since Buddy alerted the faint. Check. Good boy, we're still kind of waiting for it. He's still licking rather than getting super nudgy, which means I still have a little bit of time left. Hi, pups. I'm gonna do this. Sorry about the low frame. I wanted to make sure. Oh, hi, yeah, you know what's coming, huh? Come here, bud, sit. Um, I wanted to make sure that you guys would be able to see me when I was laying down, so. Hey, buddy, buddy, cover. Good boy, thank you. Okay, now we cuddle. We cuddle and we wait. I wish I had grabbed my blood pressure monitor, but while I was fiddling with the camera, I started getting, good boy, good check. I started getting breathy. I was out of breath and breathing kind of hard. So I decided not to go make another lap to do that because I'm alone. I'd rather play it safer. Good boy, thank you, good check. Good boy. Um, I'm having a faint. Okay, alone for now. We'll let you know. All right, so that is sent. Hey, buddy, are you excited that you alerted? So that was weird. It has been about six minutes since Buddy alerted, and I responded pretty quickly, so hopefully things won't actually go all the way here. This is why the straw is nice. I can still drink water while I'm laying. Good boy. Good check. Good check. Yes, good boy. So one thing that I did that is pregnancy specific is, good check, good check, thank you. Buddy's getting really serious now, so I think we're gonna pass out, but hopefully I can tell you this before that happens. Um, one thing that I did that's pregnancy specific is I actually put my weighted blanket under the right side of my back, and what that did, I wish I could show you, but it tilted me a little bit to the left so that I'm not flat on my back. And the reason I did that is because my uterus now is so big, um, that it can, that it can compress the vein that's on the, that's on your back, and, um, I'm sorry guys, I'm very dizzy. It can, um, drop your blood pressure and make you dizzy because it restricts the blood flow to your heart. So, pregnant women, they are not supposed to lay flat on their back. You need a 20 or 30 degree angle. So that's why I have this here. Otherwise I would have put it up there. I'm gonna text my husband and tell him I'm getting worse. G getting worse. Check. Good boy, okay. Based on the low severity of Buddy's lick just now, 
The leg squeezing helped a little bit, and I think I can go get my blood pressure cuff if I'm really fast about it. So that's one of the awesome things about having the dog. Yeah, I'm good, I can go get it. I'm going. Oh, check. Good boy, good check. So that certainly worsened things, my bad. Good boy. Oh, you're so sweet. Let's see what my pressure's at. My hands are probably so gross right now, like probably so covered in dog right now. I don't even care. As long as Buddy keeps alerting, I am not moving. Good boy. Hi. Good boy. Thank you. Just make sure that you see her in the frame a little and that's okay. Just don't show your butt, it's too nice. I feel like I'm starting to wake up. But you guys could see my pile of stuff. Oh, by the way, we're gonna hem those curtains. Gosh. <laughs> so hard to move when you're pregnant. Gonna start getting a little bit more horizontal.
Wish weighted blankets weren't so heavy. I'm feeling positively awake now. So from the point when Buddy alerted until now, I think it's been about half an hour. He gave me around eight or 10 minutes warning before I actually laid all the way down. Fantastic. Oh, my husband's calling, hold on. Hello. Hey hon, are you feeling okay now? I am, I'm good, thank you. I'm almost better. I'm actually already seated. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much for checking in. I'll measure my pressure again and then let you know. Okay, love you too. Bye. Making sure I'm awake. I took off my weighted blanket. I'm going to see how my pressure does because I'm starting to do a lot better and I want to get on with it. So hopefully my pressure hasn't fallen too much. I'm back up to 107 over 74. I don't know if I was telling you guys my pressures while I was fainting. Um, I was at 106 or whatever at the very beginning, and then the lowest I got this time was like 90, and now I'm back up to 107. My pulse is back down to 70s from being up in the 90s, trying to compensate for the drop in pressure. So I'm starting to feel a lot better. I wanna say I can't believe this happened. I can't believe I caught a faint for you, but I had a feeling. <laughs> This was going to work out in our favor, and I'm so glad that I got to show you some of the prep before the faint. I should add hand sanitizer to my list because after Buddy licked my hand all over the place, like really licked my hand, I did not want to eat chips anymore, so I feel like I should get a hand sanitizer thing that'll clip to the chips chip clip, and that way I'll have hand sanitizer. Wouldn't that be cool? As if I need another thing to remember. So I'm going to put on my compression socks now and try to get on with my day and hopefully my pressure will remain stable. I'm so happy. I just checked my phone and I wanted to tell you guys that my husband texted me back right before I fainted. He said, do you need me? And then he said, if I don't see a text in a minute or so, I'll come. And since I didn't text back, he came up and that was how he caught the faint. But that's the importance of grabbing my cell phone over anything else. I texted him. I was like, hey, we have a faint coming on. I'll let you know how it progresses. Once Buddy got super licky and I got more breathy, I was like, hey, things are progressing. I will let you know. And since I didn't let him know anything after that, he came to check just in case. And thank goodness he did. I'm so glad that I have my team here with me because he is ultimately why I was able to wake up from the faint. Usually I would get him on the phone and have him on speakerphone next to me so that he gets instant notification that I stopped talking. However, he was on the phone with customer service at the time and that's why he didn't answer the phone call. I had to text him. That was just a little bit too much for me to explain to you while I was in the heat of the situation. So I really hope that you understand and I know that you do. It always feels a little bit awkward to post videos where I'm fainting, but the overwhelming response is that it helps you guys out. So I hope that this video does the same. I know that I could have used a video like this back when I first started fainting. So it would mean a lot to me if it meant something to you guys. Also, I'd like you to notice that I'm actually doing pretty well. It's been about 45 minutes since Betty first alerted and about 10 minutes since I woke up and I actually don't really have lasting effects. So that was the importance of responding to it quickly, getting water. I am a little bit breathy, but other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. So that was overwhelmingly a success in terms of faints. I mean, the only thing that could have been better is if I didn't pass out all the way, but sometimes you just can't help that. I do think I do a little bit of a better job when I'm not worried about fixing the camera and making sure I have all of it on film, but hopefully at least this gives you some idea. And once again, I will see you guys next week. Bye.